everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build. In her new book, 30 Life Crisis, Lisa Schwartz shares her ups and downs with adulting, from dating on apps to seeking the perfect job or getting drunk at yet another baby shower. The YouTube star and actress uses personal and unfiltered stories to let readers know they're not alone. Please help me welcome Lisa Schwartz. Hey. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What an honor. I, I immediately picked up this book and I was like, this is for me. Oh, that's my favorite thing that people have been saying, <laughs> that they just like get it right away and they need it. I look at it like navigating my 30s, one drunk baby shower at a time. I'm like, yeah, been there to the point where when I looked at the back of the book, there's a wine stain <laughs> and I thought I did it. Yes. Like I was like, oh shit, I have to use this tomorrow. And then I was like, oh no, that was already there. The worst is if there isn't any booze at a baby shower. Oh. Always bring your own. <laughs> there's no shame. Can we talk about that though? I am in this similar life place and it's like, I'm look, I'm happy to come to your baby shower and support your journey, but like you also have to support my journey. It's only fair. Yeah. We went to a bridal shower, a bachelorette party, a wedding. I mean, and the amount of money that you spend on all this, which again, like I love my friends and I'm so happy to support them, but like, damn. Um, throw me a little mimosa. I feel the same way. I was like, I've been in eight weddings. The least you can do is get me a little tipsy. Yes. And I think that's fair. Yeah, I think it should be the law. Yes. Um, so you have a huge fan base from your YouTube channel, and you've had a lot of success there. You're also so open on your new YouTube, and you've shared a lot of personal stories. So why did you want to write a book now? Why did you feel like you wanted to expand on that? Um, I think that I got approached several years ago to write a book, and I wasn't ready. I didn't really have a story to tell. And then I entered the 30s and all these things started happening that I didn't realize were gonna happen. Um, not just like baby showers, but it became a very emotional journey for me. And I felt like there was no guide to that and no one was there talking about it. And so uh, when it came back up that I could write a book, the time came and I was ready to share and overshare and then overshare some more. <laughs> were you nervous? Were one of those women that, were you nervous when you turned 30? Was it something that you were like, kind of anxious about? I think so. I think society tells you to be nervous and every movie tells you to be nervous about it. Um, but then it happened and I was like, okay, I got this. And then I got dumped and then it became a whole <laughs> shit storm of emotions and trying to like refigure out who I was now as a single woman in my 30s, starting all over. And in my 20s, they didn't really have dating apps. So I had to learn that whole process, which is a process. It is a process. It is a and process. I do think it is different in your 30s because I think when you're on an app in your 20s, people are like, oh, she's just here for fun. Versus when you're in your 30s, people are like, oh, she's here to get married, which isn't always the case, but people sort of assign that to you. Totally. There is ageism. Yes. But I also think it's super empowering because at this point, you know who you are, mostly, and what you want. And so dating becomes not as challenging because you're able to, in a way, you're able to, you can verbalize and you can move on quickly. It's like a job. Yeah. It's like, no, this isn't going to work for me, so moving on. Is that the thing that surprised you most about being in your 30s? What is the thing that sort of, you're like, okay, this is a new decade. I think just the pressure of like what we think society wants of us and what we think we're supposed to do. We're supposed to check all these boxes off a list. And that's just not the case, but it's so hard to fight that theory and those thoughts that have been stuck in your head for so long. Yeah, it's weird, you have like more confidence now, but there's still that pressure. But I do feel like in my 30s, I'm a little more able to address that pressure and be like, that's not my journey. Totally. Versus in your 20s where you feel like you have to really well, take it because you're awesome and you got it all together. You're awesome, you got a, look how big your book cover is. <laughs> it's giant. It's gigantic. It's terrifying. So, you know, writing a book is no easy task. No. So what was your process like? Like, was it hard to get the stories down? Did you, were you really disciplined in when you wrote and how you wrote? Uh, sort of ritualistic. Like I had to sit in the same place, like the same candle. Like it was kind of like that to get myself like back in the groove. But there'd be days where I'm like, I just, I can't, I just can't. And it was just kind of taking your time and moving slowly through the stories. And there was a lot of tears, a lot of laughter. I basically wrote a diary and now everyone's reading it, which is sort of horrifying. <laughs> See, how did you select which stories to tell and which ones not to tell? Because you, do, it is a very personal book. It's sort of like a memoir, but also like a fun, it's like a mix. Yeah, I feel like I'm too young still to have a <laughs> memoir. Like that seems kind of crazy to me. I don't know. I. Uh, had these bullet points of ideas that I wanted to share and things that I wanted people to relate to and lessons that I wanted to like give back. Um, and then the stories just kind of fell from there. 
One thing I really love about the book is the emphasis on friendships. Um, I do think as a woman, the community of women around you is so important. And it seems like you have these two friends specifically who are just like the best. Yeah. Um, take me through that journey of like finding friends at this stage in your life, like new friends, because you almost say like, it's better to keep your friends from middle school because I being know. out there finding new friends is tough. Uh, I've, I wanna like write a whole nother thing on like how to make adult friends. Cause that is, I think that's harder than dating. That is terrifying, putting yourself out there. So I actually have no advice on that. <laughs> um, I got lucky enough to have friends or to have friends that I've had for years and years and years and years, and we've just grown together. Um, so I, you know, you tell me when you figure that out. I yeah, you want to be my friend? Yes, can we be okay, friends after yeah. this? I have a bottle of tequila on my desk. I feel so, like you would enjoy it. That's it, that's all I need. <laughs> Did you have to check with your friends before you wrote about them in the book though? I mentioned to everyone that I was writing about, except for one person who I think is going to be pleasantly upset. <laughs> I was trying to put that the right way. Um, but I did tell my best friends and I was very careful about what I shared and I felt like it was not, I'm not gonna tell their story, I'm just telling my story. So, but I checked in with my mom and you know. You also are super open and vulnerable about your anxieties yeah. and OCD and things that you've been vocal about on your, your YouTube. Um, but how do you expand on those topics in the book? Like, will your viewers see more stories or like a more in-depth look into those experiences? I think so. There's only so much like you can share in a three minute video or whatever my videos are um, on YouTube. And like, I try to keep it light there, even though I want to be relatable and share um, and help people. I feel like that's not really the space that I should use. And so the book goes pretty in depth um, on my anxiety. Can you tell that I have it? I'm like inside, like, ugh. Um, but I, I hope in doing so that it really helps somebody feel like they're not alone. And even just like sharing makes me feel a little bit better. It's like going to therapy. Like the more open we are about our mental health, I think the better we're all for it. I agree, and I like how you sort of frame your anxieties, and you because ex it's hard to explain what anxiety is. Yeah, but you sort of give like anecdotes and examples that I think help people connect to it, and may help people recognize what maybe they're feeling. Oh my God, not knowing what it is is even scarier. I remember getting panic attacks, but not really knowing what it was, and that just makes it worse and worse. So being able to identify, and it's different for everybody, but hopefully, yeah, some of these stories people can like relate to and be like, oh, that's why I feel like shit. <laughs> yeah. And I thought it was really powerful. And again, you bring in the friends and the, your community too of how they sort of like know what you're dealing with and how that helps you. And I think a lot of people try to suffer in silence or they don't want to. And it's like, no, I think when you realize you have anxiety or OCD or depression, if you actually share it with people, it kind of makes your journey just a little bit easier. I learned to ask for help and that is hard to do. It is hard, especially when you're trying to be independent and strong and I could do everything on my own. But like, asking for help is was the best thing that I could have ever done. I suffered for too long. Exactly. And I think a lot of people do, which is something I really pulled out of the book. I was like, I think a lot of people are going to be able to identify and name something and maybe then they can move forward in a more positive way versus just trying to hold on to everything. Yeah, it's too much for one person to deal with. And, you know, part of your 30s is moving forward in your career for a lot of people. And if, especially if you're maybe not somebody who chose the family path and your career really is your focus. So I wanna know for you, you have this huge fan base on YouTube and this whole business you've built. How do you approach it differently in your 30s than you did before? I don't think when I started, I even underst well, I barely knew how to like work a computer and that's <laughs> not a joke. Like I, YouTube, I started almost 10 years ago. So it was before like everything sort of started booming and before it really was a career it was just like a hobby um and I was just doing it while I was you know auditioning and doing a million other jobs so I don't even think I had the concept of this being a career and being a business and so slowly over the years now that I have a better awareness of it I feel like I've become a businesswoman and now I know what I'm doing and I realize the power of YouTube and the power of technology and all these things so I think I can't give my age credit to that more than just like YouTube and technology and everything has changed so much in the last 10 years. So now I have a job, I guess. <laughs> YouTube has changed dramatically. The oh my God, it changes like quickly, yeah. So how do you stay sort of 
in it or relevant, like, because it is like the You tell me, because I feel like I'm not staying that relevant. I don't know. I feel like I'm old in the YouTube space. Um, but it's just, I guess, following, staying on Twitter and also just listening to the people that watch me. They will tell you if something's not cool. They will tell you if something's not working and just really being vocal and communicative with the audience. Oh, yeah, they'll tell you. I saw that Shake It Off video, those comments. Oh, my <laughs> God. People are brutal on the internet. Do you guys get that here? Oh, I don't ever look at any sort of comments. That, and that yeah. is the lesson we're going to walk away with today. Do not read the comments. I don't watch my interviews and I don't read comments because I just love this. Yeah. And I, I really, truly love it. But people will ruin experiences for you with their yes. comments. Yes, yes. And then if you really approach them, if you were to approach them in real life, one, they probably wouldn't say it to you. And two, they would probably take it back quickly. So it's a good thing to remember that, that these people are just feeling brave behind their computer. But those words are just words. Yeah. Reading this book was also uh, an education for me in YouTube in a lot of ways. And um, I didn't realize how early you were connected to the Fine Brothers and Shane Dawson. So w you really were in this like early group of adapters, adaptees, people who, had, who were doing YouTube. Yeah. Um, how does it feel to sort of be in that group? Because it's really from you guys, a lot of things kind of sprung out of that. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird to think like we were just making sketch sketches in the Fine Brothers like crappy apartment in North Hollywood. And now they are like the moguls of, I mean, they have a whole building now. Like they own a building and have many people working for them. Like it's kind of bonkers, but also so exciting. And like the people that I grew up with in that space are all still doing so well and are all like such genuine people and back then it was such a community it still is but it's it's a lot different now it's a lot clickier and uh so yeah the, all those people like hold a very special place in my heart and they got me started the fine brothers literally sat me down and taught me how to edit so yeah I owe it all to them yeah. And Shane, a little bit. Right? A lot of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw recently uh, you posted a video with Shane yeah. uh, in promotion of the book, but really, I mean, your fans love you guys together and the dynamic. So why did you guys decide to do that video and sort of talk about the stories that are going to be in the book? Well, it was definitely a promotional yeah. tool. It was very helpful, and Shane has always been so supportive of me. I mean, the fact that he wrote the forward, I love this. Yeah. The fact that he wrote the forward to my book, um, is just the most wonderful and beautiful thing. And it's such a full circle experience. I went on his first book tour with him. And so now that we're doing this together, it's just like, I don't know. It's just kind of a magical relationship that will always be. Um, and so the video was just kind of fun and people freaked out and were so excited to see us together answering all these questions. And he doesn't do videos like that anymore. So that was kind of fun. And uh, yeah. How do you explain your dynamic with Shane now? Is it gross if I say brother and sister? Yeah, I guess that's kind of gross. You dated for how long? Yeah, okay, <laughs> four years. So it's a little gross. But... Yeah, okay, no, like family, best friends, family. It's just one of those, like, we might not talk all the time, but it's one of those people I can always lean on, and it's always the same when we're back together. And he's engaged now to Rylan, who is just so wonderful. He's a wonderful partner to him, and I am just so supportive of the both of them, and they seem really happy. Yeah. Where did you draw the line with, telling sh stories about Shane because there are several about him in the book. You guys had a very, you know, public relationship, but I know there were private moments as well. Yeah. So where did you sort of draw the line on how much you would kind of go into your, your relationship? We definitely are. I definitely dove into the breakup that we didn't talk about online because at the time we were processing and it's a hard thing to do that publicly. Um, so I felt like I was ready to tell my story um, and I definitely had him read it and get approval. Um, I tried to share just my side of things. Again, it's not, it's my book. It's not my place to tell anyone else's story. And he's told his side and his stories. So I feel like a lot of it is in there. There's a few details that will always just remain between us, but it's pretty, it's pretty juicy, I would I say, say. It's really thorough. Yeah, it's thorough. Yeah. It's therapeutic. That one makes me cry every every time I reread it. Yeah. I was going to say, is it something that you, like, wrote and you put down and you don't look at? Or have you gone back and reread and sort of do you kind of 
Because you sort of have to reopen those wounds every time you're reading. Yeah, I mean, I don't, like, sit back and, like, read my book at home, you know? But, like, in Why not? <laughs> if I wrote a book, I would read it every day. In editing it. And then we did the audio book as well. And he came and read the foreword. And we both had a good cry then. So, yeah, it's kind of op- reopening wounds. But you're seeing it from such a different standpoint now, right? We've both moved on. And we both have processed. So it's almost, like, nostalgic in a way. Are you currently in a relationship? I am. With Jeff. With Jeff, who's just the best of the best. And I feel like, yes, I did it. I found my person in the weirdest of ways. And he read this book, and he still loves me. So thank God. I overshare a lot for him. I would say, do you approach your relationship with Jeff any differently as far as, like, privacy or things that you learned with Shane? Like, are you a little, you hold it a little closer? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's not a YouTuber, which is a big plus, but he's comfortable on camera, but we do very minimal on camera and there's a lot that we just keep to ourselves. Made that mistake, well, not a mistake, but I I made that move once and yeah, I learned. I also want to point out that every chapter starts with a Seinfeld quote. Oh, it sure does. Which is just great. Oh, thank you. I mean, I love Seinfeld and you you pulled like the best little bit. Oh my, I mean, there's endless amounts of quotes, yeah. What is it about that, I don't want to give too much away because you kind of explain your love of Seinfeld in the book, uh, but why is that show so important for you? I mean, I grew up on Seinfeld. That That was our family show. That's like all I knew. And now looking back, I realized, and I mentioned this in the book, they're all in their 30s, they're all single, and they're all doing life in a very different way than everyone else, and they see things differently, and it like clicked. I was like, oh, Seinfeld literally raised me. Like I am, they didn't know they were writing a show about me. Elaine Bennis was so ahead of her time. So, right? Yes, She's correct. She's a woman of today. That's right. For sure. Yeah. In so many ways. Yeah. I also just love Julia Louis-Dreyfus, so. I mean, she's our hero. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like I am George Costanza, and I just love that. <laughs> Interesting that that's who you align most with. Oh, my God, he's, like, the most neurotic, crazy, like, he digs desserts out of the trash can. Been there. Have you done that? Okay. I'm not judging. I was just, I was a follow-up. I know you've judge done like it. A, I know you've done I, it. It's, it's possible. It was on the top. It was clean. <laughs> that's the thing. As long, it's like in Sex and the City. It was, like, it was still in the tinfoil, so you just, like, take it out. Correct. It's good. It's yeah. totally okay. Um, I also love that in the book you sort of end on a note of self-care. And uh, why has that become important to you or more important to you in your 30s? Well, first of all, the 30s body is different than the 20s. It's falling apart. (laughs) Yeah. I have back pain now, like, (laughs) And we have a long way to go, too. I actually had that thought. I was like, what am I going to be like at 60? Ooh. If you don't self-care, you're going to be in some serious trouble. But in your 20s, at least for me, I just, like, went hard and had fun and, like, didn't really, like understand the value of like stopping and and taking care of myself and not just like going to the spa and all that stuff but like really like if you need a night in and you need to say no to plans say no to plans if that's what like will make you feel better you you need to do that and I think that's a really hard concept to be selfish in a not selfish way but like take care of yourself put yourself first and then everything else will be okay and floss oh my god floss Dental insurance is so expensive. <laughs> Floss. Also, I feel like your teeth start aging in your third. It's weird. Like, I'm very aware of, like, you have nice teeth. yellowing. I do a lot of work. Do you? I floss twice a day. Whoa. Invisalign. Wow. I'm whitened. I didn't do any of that in my 20s. Yeah. Now you're making up for it now, and it's expensive. It's so expensive. Yeah. If, get going now, girls. Get going now. Start I see you. Start early. Start now. You got braces. You're on the right track. You're doing it right. Good for you. Don't uh, overpluck your eyebrows. I made that mistake. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I look back at pictures and my eyebrows are like really. It's scary. It's scary. That was also the trend. It was the trend in we the nineties. We were 90s. victims to a trend. Oh man, were we? Yeah. yeah. Just let them grow out because trends are cyclical. So bushy eyebrows will come back. So don't ever yes. just keep them. They always come back. Because once they're gone, it's they never feel. Oh, quite I try the same. to grow mine back out. It, that is a horrendous process. I didn't last very long. Yeah, these are filled in. So beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> we just sit here <laughs> telling each other how cute we are. You're doing great. You're beautiful. You're, you're oh just God. doing great. We have a book. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, before we go, we do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> we have a couple of questions. Awesome. Uh, the first one comes from Twitter. Oh. Coco Crazy 406 asks, What was the hardest, most difficult thing to write? Ooh, there was a lot of difficult things. My mom, writing about my family was was difficult because um, I had to relive. My mom went through sort of a traumatic experience with a boyfriend who had passed away 
And that story is just devastating. Um, and so I found that difficult to write because I wanted to tell that properly. And I wanted to do him justice and my mom justice. And I think I did it. But that was difficult. I think you did too. And I think it's also with parents, they are obviously responsible for some of our anxieties and things Ooh. that we, and so I think you did a really good job at addressing like, okay, so the source of this may be because my parents did this, but also I love them very much. I understood they were doing their best and we, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think that's something we all kind of, in your thirties, you start kind of seeing your parents as people and. What a weird thing, huh? They're like just. They're just human. They're just humans. I thought they were robots for a while, but... I thought my mom was a superhero, and sometimes I still think she is. I think she probably is. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Um, we have two more questions. It's the first one. Uh, I, that was my question. Are you serious? <laughs> About your eyebrows? They look great. Oh, thank you. I actually um, one time accidentally shaved off half my eyebrows. Oh, no. <laughs> you grew back beautifully. Yeah, you yeah. have great eyebrows. <laughs> thank you. They look but fantastic. That was my question. Anything else you want to say or add? <laughs> Um, how has like how has YouTube changed your life completely? Because I know that it's such a wonderful platform, but it's all it also can be such a like terrible and um, critical platform at the yeah. same time. How has it changed your life and your view on other people and how you see things differently? Well, that's a good question. Well, it obviously changed my life tremendously. It gave me a life I didn't even realize I was gonna have. So for that, I'm like so grateful. But it is, I think, in the 10 years, in the recent years, it's become a relatively toxic place. I think people just in general are angry and um, need to put that anger somewhere. So sometimes the comments really get to me, but I like to think that it's displaced anger. I feel bad for your generation. Um, I think it's a lot more difficult to navigate. So I'm hoping that I could just be a role model and inspiration and like let you know that, like, I'm trying to brush these off and hopefully that you guys will too and also encourage you to not be those people because there's nothing good comes from that. You don't get anything back. So I don't know if that answered your question, but it's definitely changed my life and I'm here and that's cool and your eyebrows look great. <laughs> <laughs> also, as an actor, I feel like it's probably given you just so much freedom to create your own content because you talk about auditioning and how just horrible and stressful that is. But when you have YouTube, you can really be in control of that. And oh, absolutely. Choose your own roles and make you your do own whatever content. you want. I mean, I'm my own producer, my own writer, my own editor. Like, it's such a great place to create. And I encourage anyone that's trying to be an actor or a writer or anything in the business to make your own stuff. Whether no one sees it or millions of people see it, it's such a great creative uh, outlet. And that's why I started it, just to do that while I was auditioning, because the audition world is a whole nother beast. Uh, I mean, we could talk about that for hours and I'll cry with you and we'll hold each other tight. It's, it's really a discouraging place. So to be able to make your own stuff, stuff that you're proud of and get it up there, I mean, what a great platform. What a great and I feel like, too, for new fans of yours, there's so much. Like, they can just, like, go back and... Oh, my God. There's, like, yeah. so many videos. Many of them I'm not that proud of. Um, I mean, for a while there, I was making five videos a week. So, like, there's a lot of content on there. So, like, skim through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good note. And one more question. Hi. Um, in your 20s, did you always imagine that you would write a book? Or was there a moment that made you suddenly realize you had to? Oh, I would have never imagined that I could write a book ever. Um, it didn't even cross my mind. Uh, and at the time, YouTubers weren't writing books, so that wasn't even like an idea. And then people started doing it, and there was like this big like burst of YouTubers writing books, and that's when I got asked to do one, and I didn't have a story to tell. Uh, so no, the answer is no. And then recently, it all of a sudden clicked, and I was like, oh yeah. And now it's like all I want to do. It's, I just really, really, maybe because it's like super isolated and you don't have to like leave your house. And I was like, I love this. Um, but it's just such a interesting way to tell your stories, different than anything that I've ever done. So what would the next book be about? You know, I'm now in a relationship and I still feel like I'm doing it different. <laughs> like we're just like on our own. We're just doing relationship our own way. And I think there's something interesting with that. I do, because I think the quicker you realize there's not one way to do a relationship, the happier your relationship will be. 
I right? I think so. You do yeah. what works for you and your partner. Yeah, not what everyone says you're supposed to do. I will read that book. So get to writing. I'm on it. But in the meantime, you guys can read this book. Please Life do. Life Crisis is available now wherever <laughs> books are sold. It's really great. It's really fun. It's such a fun read. So congrats on this. Thank you. And put your hands together for Lisa Schwartz. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.